Hello everyone, this is the first video in this playlist in which I'll be sharing with you some of my attempts at the code pen challenges. A little disclaimer before we continue with the topic of this video. This is my first attempt at recording a video without reading us from a script, so you might hear a lot of stupid mistakes and a thicker accent. So please go easy on me. So in case you don't know what are the code pen challenges, they are basically proposing a monthly theme and during each week of the month you are supposed to complete a challenge that is based on that theme. The theme of this month is food and this week's challenge is about alphabet soup which I don't really know what it is to be honest with you. However, based on this second idea I already knew what I was going to cook. Why the second idea specifically? Well, because of the GSAP split text plugin which became totally free to use as well as all the GSAP plugins by the way so it is a great opportunity to see what I can do with it. In addition, I have always wanted to recreate this text effect, but I kept procrastinating. So this challenge was like uh, a motivation for me to finally do it. And without any further ado, let's get started. First, I started with a new read project, which is a skippable step if you don't want to use a, a bundler, especially for a small project like this one. Next, of course, I created the text element and removed all the default CSS and JavaScript code. And since I'll be using GSAP, I had to install the library and import it and import the text plugin. As stated in the documentation, if you want to use a GSAP plugin, you have to register it first, especially if you are using a CDN link to, uh, to import the library. And now we have two options to use it and I'll go with the second one because it's the newest to future proof the video and the code as much as possible. Next I set a class to the text element so we can target it with the GSAP animation. Now knowing that GSAP and the text plugin are working fine I removed this animation because I no longer need it and then created new three variables. C is the counter of the random letters that will appear before the permanent one. For example, if we set C to 5, we'll have 5 random letters appearing before P becomes permanent. Current character is the index of the character in the text element. Copy is an array that will contain the, the letters of the original text. Here I prepared the set interval function which I use to generate a new random character every 20 milliseconds and this condition clears the interval once the last character animation is finished. To generate a random character I found this clean and concise solution on reddit. The only thing I'm gonna change here is the number of the first index of the alphabet since I want it to, uh, to be uppercase not lowercase. This is supposed to animate the first character only. If this works, we we'll keep increasing the, the, ind the value of the index of the characters to apply the animation to the rest of them. And since it worked, I added these few lines. This will increment the value of C every 20 milliseconds and then we'll use this as a condition to pass the animation from one character to the next one. As a reminder, C is the number of random characters that appear before the permanent one. So this translates to if 7 characters have been appeared, pass the animation to the next character in the, in the text. The goal of this for each loop is to make the text invisible and create a copy of the, of the initial text. And this if condition is unnecessary so don't add it. Now we'll make the current character visible. As you can see the animation works, however we end up with a random text. So what I'm gonna do to fix this is to copy the right letter from the original text and then set it by the end of the animation of each character. Finally, when I center the text, you see this strange kind of movement. And this is because I'm not using a monospace font, which means that every character has a different size. 
This pushes the text to the left when the character takes a greater space and to the right when the character takes less space. So to fix this I obviously need to use a monospace font. Now time to publish on CodePen and see if this gets me famous. This is it for this video, I hope you learned something from it and most importantly I hope you like this kind of new format of tutorials. So make sure to like, share and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.